In this video, we're going to be going over the two tools you need to succeed with Amazon Online Arbitrage in 2022. We're going to be going over what they are, how to use them, and how they help me consistently spend over a hundred grand a month on profitable products to sell on Amazon. Just want to mention prior to us getting into it, if you're interested in working directly with me to grow your online arbitrage business, I would recommend you take a look at the link in the description and consider booking time to speak with us in terms of what that would look like on stuff where you'll get all the coupons I use, all the sites I like to buy from, direct access to me, all that kind of stuff on there, a bunch of weekly calls, stuff like that. So if you're interested, you can apply down below and we can see if it's a good fit. But let's talk about the two tools that are important for online arbitrage success, product research. On, uh, on this. So we're going to go through basically full tutorial, uh, both of them. Um, they keep it very simple. Keepa, which is 20 bucks a month, and Selleramp, which is 17 bucks a month. Going to get into the basics as well as some of the advanced stuff, the specific data I'm looking at, and ultimately how to use them to find items on stuff. So scroll down initially. We can see right here. So down here at the bottom is keep us. We can see it might show three charts for you. I have it set up to show two charts for me on here. And there's tons of stuff we can select in terms of seeing different data. What I like to have selected is I'm pretty sure new is automatically put. So now we can see the new price over time. More importantly than the new price is having the buy box selected. So we can see that the pink line is the buy box line. At some points, they take away the buy box, which is annoying, certainly happens. But what exactly is the buy box? So the buy box is basically this buy it now option right here. And that's where you want to be as a seller, because this is people ask like how to get sales with uh, the competition by getting in the buy box. So that is the buy box price, which is more important than the lowest price. And you can see how in many cases, the buy box price, not in many, it oftentimes is pretty similar with the third party FBA, but in some cases it's above that. Um, on that just because the buy box is geographically based there's other factors that go into it in terms of like your delivery times what warehouse they're at in respect to the customer different stuff like that but i want to have new selected third party fba and the buy box selected as well sometimes i'll do third party fbm which is uh people shipping directly to the customer on uh, on that and i also want to have sales rank selected on um uh, on here as well as down here on the bottom chart new offer count which is pretty important as well new offer count is the competition Oftentimes people ask like what amount of sellers is too much. It's typically the trend of sellers is much more important. And if that trend is an issue, then you'll see it in the price action. This is an example of that. We can see that back in June and pretty consistently the whole rest of the year, there was only four sellers or less on it. And then that off count, you know, three X basically up to like 13, 14 getting into September year and naturally the price went down on stuff. Keep is amazing. You can see the history for the a lifetime of a total item existing, basically going back years on stuff. Like if a product's been around since 2016, you're gonna be able to see all that data from 2016. If you're a beginner though, I'd, I'd mainly just focus on the 90 day chart outside of like seasonal items and stuff because you're not buying big quantities of stuff anything anyway. So you'll just get distracted and confused if you're looking at more data than you need to. If you're just buying a couple of stuff and placing test stores, I would definitely recommend just focusing on the three month and everything. But the big things you need to be looking at is lowest third party FBA or third party FBA price, buy box price, sales rank, and the competition. You can have some of the other stuff selected, but I prefer to just to keep it simple because we're selling new items and stuff like that. Um, other features with and keep on terms of getting more detailed you want to be looking at track pro track product, not looking at that data right here is pretty helpful. Uh, hop in here on product details. We can see the sales rank average for uh, which is looking like it's a little glitched here. It's saying the same thing. It's not going to be the same thing over the uh, the time frame as well as the review count. Not really looking at that. The, the price averages I really like here, the third party FBA stuff like that. Not super worried about these other ones outside of the new offer count average is pretty helpful on that as well. Um, offers is very helpful with Enkiba. This is one a lot of people sleep on. I'm not a huge fan of these stock counts just because I've noticed them to be inaccurate. Uh, looking at listings I'm personally selling. What I am looking at over here is this data on first scene. This is pretty cool. You can filter it top to bottom on different stuff right here, as well as um, taking a look at you know when someone was initially seen on. So we can see this seller was first seen on this listing 15 months ago, 14 months ago, right? And they're still on it. They might have gotten on you know on and off it in between and such. But if we hop over to the buy box statistics, we can see what percentage of each seller is getting of the buy box share as well as at what price. I love this tab as well because I can see the average price sales are going to four different sellers. And we can see that right here, this one seller only has one review, but he's getting 10% uh, more of the buy box share at literally 30% higher price than that. It's probably just because he's listed there. Maybe he's repricing better or whatever reason 
on that, but you can see how it totally varies. You'll see it's very normal within the buy box stats to see oscillation in like the 10 to 20% range just because where different people are priced at, whether or not they're FBA. You can see most people are FBA, um, but some people don't have that check mark, so they're just doing FBM. On that, you can see that data over time as well. But if I were a beginner, I would just keep it nice and simple, mainly price history as well as product details, looking at some of these averages here. Offers, if you're diving a little deep into or just want validation that sellers have been on this for a while. Buy box stats in terms of deciding where you want to put your minimum price on the repricer is a big resource I'm a big fan of taking advantage of. Uh, just kind of a side note, why we're looking at a great value item. So a great value item is actually great value is a Walmart private label brand. And therefore, no one's wholesaling it from Walmart. So anyone that's selling this is probably buying it from Walmart and is a reseller similar to us, either doing retail arbitrage or online arbitrage. On, on this, this is a pretty comparable item in that using reverse sourcing, using the next tool we're going to look at, there's a good chance if people are carrying this, they're doing a similar model to us. Therefore, the other products they're carrying are being uh, carried on. The, uh, the other products they have are probably going to be similar items that we can get from the same place or same type of place, essentially on that. So keep us 20 bucks a month. Get it. You need it on uh, on stuff. Seller Amp is the second one we're going to talk about. Seller Amp is 17 bucks a month, and you can actually try it completely for free. It's a tool I'm a part of on uh, on stuff. So I definitely recommend getting a free trial. You can just go on the website. If you don't like it, that's fine. On uh, on stuff, but Seller Amp really revolutionized um, online arbitrage sourcing, basically. So immediately right here, uh, you can actually make it big. A lot of people don't know you can like do a whole bunch of stuff to it. You can little little embed action right there. On uh, that, I personally just got so used to it being over here, so that's pretty much just what I'm doing. On uh, on that, the main stuff I'm looking at on Seller Amp, I'm not a huge fan of looking at the dimensions, some of these other things in here on stuff. Th this Google button's really important in terms of looking for an item profitably. On that, we'll get into that later though. What I'm mainly using is the profit calculator right here, which shows the BSR as well as the estimated sales on a lot of listings, and then shows you your expected max cost. So like, let's say we paid a dollar for this, we would make you know a low profit for Unix. This is really an inexpensive item, but the ROI would be really good on uh, on that. But you can set on selleramp.com. You set can even add like your prep center costs, any sales tax stuff like that, as well as your target ROI and sales ranks on uh, stuff, which is pretty helpful, which a lot of people don't do on uh, on that. But the profit calculator is really important. There's also a mobile app we have for this. Um, so if you're doing retail arbitrage, I would recommend getting the mobile app. It's included in the subscription. On that ranks and prices down here, I didn't use a ton, but it is helpful. And I know a lot of people do uh, take advantage of this data on here. You can do it over time. See the rank average, the buy box average, um, the Kiva BSR drops, different stuff like that. You can see your eligibility for whatever reason. I'm not logged in on that. This is very important. Uh, the buy box share, private label IP analysis. You would also see this up here if there were any alerts on that. They would, it would make it very clear. And that's you don't necessarily have to scroll down on this in every item. If you want to see a smaller version of the Keepa, I know what you're thinking. Do I need Keepa and Seller if I have Seller up? Yes, because you need to be able to look at this advanced data within uh, offers, buy box stats, and variations if the listing does have variations on that. So you do need both and everything. But we can see a small view of the Keepa down here as well as more detailed profit calculator, which you could calculate merchant field as well as small and light. If uh, that's an option, the Google Sheets integration, I have a whole video on that, but that's really, really helpful for, you know, just keeping track of everything essentially on uh, on that. You can also move any of these around if uh, if you ever want to on stuff, which is cool. Discounts, not really using that. Uh, but offers right here, you can see the floor in terms of like different uh, price barriers it needs to get through to get up as well as stock counts. And then lastly, my favorite part of Seller Amp by a mile is actually going in and reverse sourcing, which is taking a look at other sellers' catalogs. And this is how I actually find a lot of the items I do today on stuff. So we can go down here, scrolling over these sellers, we can see their review counts. Typically, I'll personally just open up everyone on, a, on stuff. I'll give you guys a view of what the storefront search looks like. Some people do it only based on a certain review count, stuff like that. I personally just open up everyone because I want to get a really holistic view. So now we're in the storefront search feature of Seller Amp, and this is how the magic begins and how it, you're actually able to find items consistently with this. Coming to someone's catalog, we can filter by brands and filter by categories they carry. So if, say you want to only do home and kitchen or say you only do, want to do Betty Crocker brand. And now as I'm scrolling through here, I'm looking at the BSR. Typically, I'm trying to stay under a 50K BSR on that. And now I'm opening up any listings I find that I that I want to go after right here and, and basically taking a look, hopping in, taking a look at the Keepa on stuff like that and seeing, okay, is this me and my velocity? 
criteria, price stability criteria, stuff like that. Let's say it does one click Google right here to take a look and actually find this via Google shopping, see if there's any websites that carry this at a at profitable price. So this is like a three pack of cake right here and stuff. Let's see, you might even have to combine some of these, but they're dollar fifty. This might actually work. Right here, our fees are a little high on that. I was gonna say if I end up paying like five bucks with everything, that's yeah, not uh gonna work. Was any point this over twenty? Wow, it's actually really, really stable. So now pulling it right uh right there. Let's see. Is this anywhere? And it should be hard to find items, especially your first couple of stuff right here. Wow. Three pack right here. So we pay six a piece. They're selling for sixteen. Definitely not gonna work on uh, on that but it, ta it takes a while so what i'll do typically is when i'm coming into catalogs i'm filtering by brand filtering by category almost always by brand on uh, on stuff scrolling through seeing stuff that means my velocity criteria opening up getting a more holistic view of the listing if it has any variations different stuff like that taking a look at different items and then actually going out last thing is really important a lot of stuff has variations especially in the shoe and clothing niche i like to do so we're hopping in here variations within Keepa, seeing which of the variations sell for the most and sell the quickest, which is by filtering the ratings right here on that because Amazon doesn't set, tell us which of the variations sells the quickest, but it does tell us which of the variations has the highest percentage of reviews, which is a good way to assume which of the variations sells the quickest on stuff. So a big mistake a lot of people make is not going after stuff that has like 1% of ratings. When stuff that has 1% of ratings is fine to me in uh, in many cases, it's just the, typically the less than 1% of ratings on non sub 5k bsr listings i won't uh, go after the bsrs for the entire listing however the keepa charts are for each individual asin which is each size each color whatever on uh, that um of the different items on that but that's a quick overview of seller amp and keepa if you're brand new you're going to need both of them no need to get any other complicated software subscriptions anything like that just keep it simple get a free trial seller amp Get a keep a subscription and binge a bunch of my content. Listen to the Buy Box Bandits podcast. French didn't work with me. Check out the link below to apply for coaching. On that, have a great day. I appreciate it.